<clears throat> All right, so this is the Perda Chingon. Uh, again, purple body, pink throat, pink bead, and uh, we'll go ahead and get into this pattern here. All right, we've got the hook and vise. <clears throat> I'm using the Tiemco 113 in a size 14. I do like this hook. Uh, heavy wire, great hookup, and um, landing ratio on these on these hooks with that nice little upturned point. Um, <clears throat> the bead itself is a tungsten slotted bead in a 3.3 millimeter size, uh, anodized pink, not painted. Uh, the color just lasts a little bit better on these anodized uh, beads. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and uh, get our thread base down. I, for the body, I am using Ultra or UTC 70 denier in purple. Um, as base as, as, as the base thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm just got my starting my thread inside the bead itself. So you just kind of slide it through that slot and just start wrapping. And what this is going to do is just get this bead uh, stabilized at the eye. And I'm just going to keep wrapping until the bead essentially stops turning and my thread gets kicked out of the slot. There you go. So wrap that down. Get rid of my tag here. And so I'm just going to line so that slot is directly underneath on the ventral side of the hook there. All right, so pretty basic pattern. There's not a whole lot to this, as you'll see. Uh, tail that I'm going to tie in is Coque de Leon. I just stripped away all that fuzzy stuff just to get it out of the way. Uh, this is off of a saddle. Um, so again, just as, this is medium pardo. Um, I just like the speckling and the tone of the color here. So let me just kind of clean this up so I can utilize it. So we're going to take, oh, I don't know, that's maybe about a quarter of an inch, just maybe a little bit more, three-eighths worth of material. That's about 15, 20 fibers in there, uh, if you will. I'm just pulling this perpendicular to the stem so I can line up my tips, pinch my material, rip away um, the fibers from the feather stem, the feather shaft. So the tail is going to be as long as the fly is uh, basically the entire hook length. So I'm going to lay that down and just get it wrapped in with two turns there and just measure out my tail. So where my wraps are going to end is going to be here. So I'm just going to draw that tail in just a bit. Okay, that'll do there. All right, so I got it where I wanted. I like that. And so for the body on this, I am using Crystal Flash. And we'll, the color we'll be using is UV Purple. <clears throat> so I just cut a couple strands off the hank there. I'm going to line up my ends just so I can tie it on. Doesn't necessarily be, need to be lined up, but just for maximizing and efficiency um, using the entire strands themselves. So I'm just going to take the strands hold it over the thread and just pinch my thumb tip right over the material under the thread, basically just folding the material over the thread, pinch the tags and the main part of the crystal flash, and then just use the, th the thread itself to draw the material down towards the hook. And then I can just continue over wrapping my material in, wrapping my thread all the way to where the hook bend starts. Now notice I still have my tags going here. Uh, I can go ahead and actually just clip those. I'm going to clip them just as long as needed to fill uh, the remainder of the exposed uh, part of the body here just to help build the body. You'll notice as I come up my thread wraps staying close together touching as they move up forward and then just wrapping building that base right behind the bead, creating a little bit of a prof or a taper now from the tail up to the thorax. Okay, now at that point, just a slight taper, you can see that. <clears throat> now at this point, get that crystal flash out of the way, I'm gonna switch threads here. Okay, so just like the HDA Fave, when I switched to the hotspot collar, uh, same with this thing, uh, this fly pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and go with Glow Bright number one, which is their fuchsia, and um, basically same thing. I'm just gonna parallel these two, pinch them in my 
a left hand and then bring my thread over and basically just start wrapping and twisting my thread around the existing one a couple times and then I can trim away the purple thread and replace it with the pink here. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to make that turn just yet, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a whip finish and I'm going to utilize the bobbin cradle here and go ahead and spin my crystal flash up to the collar. All right, so just winding my thread around over the top of the crystal flash and then wrapping in front of it to secure it and lock it in. Clip away my crystal flash. <clears throat> and truthfully, that's gonna be it for the body itself. Real basic, real quick. I am gonna go, I'm going to finish this off and build a little bit of a taper with each turn there. Okay, so once I got that there, clip my globe right away. That's it. All right, so at this point, if you notice in uh, the demo one that I showed you, it had a painted uh, wing case on top. And so basically that's just uh, simulating the development phase of mature uh, nymphs. So when that wing case darkens, that, tip, that typically signifies um, emergence of that fly is gonna happen pretty soon. So uh, we're just using and just for you to know, that's just Sally Hansen nail polish, extreme wear, because we're going to get extreme in the stream. <laughs> I don't know if you guys want to hear that craziness, but anyway, so <coughs> just shake this up a little bit, make sure it's mixed, uh, and just be careful. And I know there's UV products out there, UV resins uh, that are already black and whatnot. I just don't have any, and I have this bottle, I've had this bottle nail polish for a long time and so I'm just trying to use this up and two it gives you an idea of what I do or what to do with this nail polish if that's what you have so what I'm gonna do is I have my fingers uh, wrapped around the vise here to help support so I got my other fingertip that has the the polish uh, brush and I got rid of most of that excess off of the brush here but just enough to where when I pull forward I paint well enough on top of the bead. I want to get a little more on that collar there. And that's it. So my fingertips, um, when they're on the on the vise itself, and uh, when they're together, just helps stabilize so I can paint onto the bead uh, and not make a total mess. So again, just a hot spot, mo or a, a black spot on, on the back there. <clears throat> Most Pertagon patterns, you know, it's just a really small spot, but I make the most out of it and I really coat the top of the bead there. Okay, now now that we got the wing case painted on there, I have one that's at this point, but not coated with UV yet, which is the final step. So <clears throat> one thing with nail polish is you do have to let this dry. If you don't let it dry and try to coat it with UV, because the UV, when it, when that uh, UV light hits it, it shrinks because it's hardening. And so when your nail polish is not cured and not dried fully, it forces its way through the UV. And so it'll find a little spot that's weak and just pop this little uh, ink bubble out, if you will. And so that can create a miss if you're not careful about that. So we're gonna let this one dry. What I do is I tie a number of these and I just put them on a cork, let them dry, and then I can come back later to ones that are already dried like this one, and then finish them off with the UV resins. So again, this one was already pre-tied. Again, has a, the black painted spot on the back. Um, <clears throat> and then I can go ahead and use my UV resin. And just as an FYI, the resin I'm using is Tactical Fly Fisher's UV resin. I like this, universal with a variety of lights. This is a cheap light. Um, so it, it cures and, and does, I like it. It's exceptionally well. It's about a, a thin consistency. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add UV resin, not a ton. I can always build 
and then I'm at you coating the top where the paint is. And the reason why I do that is it adds durability to that paint painted spot so it doesn't chip away. That's one thing I saw a lot when the Pertigones were coming out is the paint would chip and you'd lose that little wing case basically. And so if I coat with the UV resin, uh, it'll hold it. And notice after I coat, I was spinning my rotary vise just to keep or prevent the UV resin from globbing up onto one side or another. And then when you spin it, it also allows the UV resin to create a nice taper throughout above and below <clears throat> and so now that's the finished product right there um, again has just a phenomenal sink rate very minimal as you saw pretty quick and easy to tie however you know it's just getting used to utilizing and working with UV resin and just making sure you don't let it settle to one side glob up and that sort of thing so a uh, great pattern uh, and again w I use this pattern when I'm Euro nymphing usually it's on my top or my dropper uh, not necessarily my point fly although if I got uh, you know some really skinny water slow moving water that sort of thing you know I tie these down to a 20 uh, so one great thing about the 113 um, it does go down into a size 20 uh, 14 16s 18s and 20s um, dry dropper rigs it also works extremely well um, in any other form of suspension rigs. So uh, some good versatility with this.